all right hello everyone welcome back to our twitch streaming here um we'll keep going right we've i mean i've taken a break for the past couple of weeks i'm back recharged and ready to go again so we'll pick back up where we left off and um last time we were kind of troubleshooting the runner right uh what we had we had basically the pipeline was failing because we didn't have a runner registered with our gitlab ce instance so if you remember the runner process actually is the one that runs the pipeline uh follows the instructions in the gitlab-ci.yaml file right in uh this file right here, the one we've created with all the stages of the pipeline at each stage, what script, what it, what should happen at each stage. So we had an issue with the runner not being registered with GitLab CE. So then the pipeline could not run because the runner process is not registered with GitLab CE. So they don't talk with each other. So the pipeline failed, it's not able to run. So while well, troubleshooting a bit, to see what's going on. I just ran this command, right, right the Docker Compose exec on runner one, GitLab runner and register. So this is the runner one container, run this command, GitLab runner and register. And that seems to kind of fix the issue. If you look now at the CICD, on the settings, on the runners, we see here that we have uh, a shared runner available, this runner one that we just registered. So that's all I've done, right? Uh, I've just ran this command again because this one is actually already in the setup.sh, that shell script that we've created all the way back in the first sessions we've had. And one of the commands uh, was here registering the GitLab runner, right? So I just ran this command again and it seems to have done the trick this time. Um, it registered the runner. So that's all I've done. I, I'm still not sure if the pipeline will actually work, but as you catch up with this, right, we're probably video 10, 11 of the series. Um, so we're getting close to actually finishing up, wrapping up what we want to have the CI/CD pipeline do for us. Um, so as you follow along, if you get to this stage and you have the same issue, the runner not being able to talk with the with GitLab, then just rerun the register command and that hopefully should help you also. Um, but then let's see if the pipeline actually works. So if you go back to CI/CD pipelines, we see the three runs that have failed. Uh, we have the option here to retry all failed or canceled jobs. So let's give that a try. And let's see what happens. With that, we see that the pipeline is running. And if we click on it, we're at the pre-snapshot stage. Let's see what happens here. If we click on that, um, there was an error fetching the job. Oh, it's running now. Let's see. So it's using Docker executor with the image that we've created, that image that's the that Docker image that's on Docker hub, right? So right now probably is what happens the first time the pipeline runs, which is our case here, it's gonna go and pull that image down, right, on your local installation of GitLab, on that CentOS server in my case, it's gonna pull that image down, and that image has all the pre-required components from our pipe for, uh, for our pipeline. It has PyTS already pre-installed, it has Ansible right, already pre-installed, so it has all the components of our pipeline and um, for each stage, you know, we, we describe the script. And so it's pulling here, the image. That's what's happening most probably right now. Just getting the image down from Docker Hub. And then once it has the image, 
then it's going to go ahead and follow the instructions in that dot gitlab dash ci dot yaml file right all the three stages go first stage do a pytf snapshot infrastructure get the ospf neighborships right the ones all the the information that we've defined in our pyts test scripts um all right so this it's going to take a bit of time initially so this is done like i said initially uh if you update your docker image right i have here version 0.1.0 Right, that's the tag that I've associated with an image. It's my initial image. Something happens, you update Python, you update Py, uh, PyTS, Ansible comes up with a new version or you want to test a new version. Then you would create a new image, right? You would add a new tag and then you would modify that new tag also in your pipeline definition to run the new image. So once you update the image, then again, it will take a bit longer for that image to get pulled down uh, with the new tag, with the new version of applications that you have installed over there. But this is our initial run of the pipeline. So it's going to take a bit longer to pull the image and we'll see subsequent runs of this pipeline. It will no longer go and actually it'll fetch the, the image from Docker Hub because it already has it cached. All right, so queue for four seconds, timeout one hour, elapsed time three minutes. Uh, okay, so hopefully it's going to make a bit of progress here and pull it down. Okay, using Docker image, preparing the environment, running on runner, okay, getting source from repository, create a fresh repo, using this Docker image, which is the one we've configured, right? And now it's going and running the instructions from that YAML file, the gitlab-ci.yaml file. So it's changed the directory into PyTS, runs the job, with this test environment, oh, the test environment will fail because I'm not connected to it. So you cannot connect to the devices. Failed because it couldn't connect to the devices. So that's what's gonna happen next. I'm gonna connect to my DMZ. Let's connect. And make sure that CML is still running. All right, there we go. VPN in. Let me go. Thirty-three. Log in into CML. See if my test environment is still there. And it is there, and it is running. So I have my routers. Okay, so this looks good. All right, so no matching files, warnings, no files to upload, exit code one. Let's see, does it tell us what happened here? Uh, of course, there's errors. Cut error, test bad plugin. Code one error. Devices distribution router zero one. Plugin exceptions. Okay, so um, yeah, it failed. Right, it couldn't connect to the devices. So let's try it again. One more go. And if we refresh it, let's just show that it's running. And it is. And let's go to the first stage. Pre snapshot.
Docker executor, same thing. It should be faster this time. All right, let's see. It shouldn't pull the image again because it already has it cached. So what we've done right for the past couple of months now is we've built this CSD pipeline with GitLab, GitLab Community Edition, with Ansible, with PyTS, with all these tools, right? I showed you how to bring them all together. Okay, so what happened here? Why is it failed again? Plugin exceptions. Test bad file existing is readable. Test by that py. It looks like there might be a problem with that missing keys, devices, the distribution router type, devices type. Okay, so let's have a look what's going on in our PyTS. Uh, and that would be in the PyTS folder, test environment. Let's make sure that this is a, a valid YAML first. YAML linter. go the YAML is valid okay so that is all right missing keys devices that type YAML trace back Cut error in plugin testbed plugin trace back source testbed.py line 70. Slab packages. Missing keys devices. This router 01. OS. Type. Oh, we don't have the type here. Let me see. For router 01 and 02, we're missing the type. We have an XOS as a type distribution router. Okay, give me one second. Let's check what happened. An XOS. Yes. Uh, type. Yes, so there's a mistake here. We should have also a type of iOS XC. And also here, a type of iOS XC. And I should perform this change actually here. Type iOS XC. And 
type by YSXE, right? All right, so we have this. Uh, are there any changes that I've performed here? Great environment. Uh, oh yeah, I had one thing, create environment, verify runners. It's that. I was a mistake in there. Uh, all right, so where are we here? Parallels, source, CICD, git status, test environment. Okay, so we've updated that. So we do a git add all, git commit dash m, edit type iOS XC for iOS XC devices in PyITS test bed file. Git push developer put in the credentials failed to push some that should have locally usually caused by other repository pushing the same reference. You may want to first enable the remote changes, git pull before pushing again. Did we perform any changes uh, in here? I don't remember. Okay, let's do a git pull. You have divergent branches and to specify how to reconcile them uh, before your next pull. You can replace git config with git config that's a go reference or repository. You can also pass rebase, no rebase. Uh, git branch. We're on main. Okay, so I don't have I have only a main branch. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, we have only our main branch. Uh, please check your your name and email address were configured automatically based on username and host name. Please check they are accurate. You can see this match by saying them explicitly. Configuration file. Reset author, that should be fine. Failed to push some references. Updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally. Get a remote origin. Um, what work do we have here? Uh, two weeks ago, pipeline failed. We know that. But we shouldn't really have any other changes. So why is it complaining? Fail to push some refs. Okay, let's say git status. Your branch and origin main have diverged and have one and one different commits each respectively. Git pull to merge the remote branch into yours. Git pull. Okay, 
to config pull rebase merge fast forward only you can replace your config and you config global to set a default preference okay so we'll just do a merge rebase false merge branch on please ask me message to explain why this merge is necessary especially the version of the stream to a topic branch um, merge branch that's fine that's enough of a comment get status your branch is ahead of origin by two commits to polish okay if we do good git push now developer let's go one two three four five all right so let's see now what we have here this should have been updated and it did one minute ago and it also triggered the pipeline and let's just see quickly pyts test environment we have type now ios xc okay so if we go under pipeline cicd pipelines let's see come on gitlab seems to have slowed down a bit over here <laughs> um, but I think it got the changes <laughs> let's see what's going on uh, am I still connected oh it has some trouble connecting to it is the CPU CPU is that oh 400% uh, it's getting hammered So let's see, I'm curious what happened with the pipeline, what it recovers a bit and catches its breath here. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to connect back to it. Um, so I mean, in, in real life, right, you wouldn't run GitLab on your own laptop. You would have a server dedicated to it with dedicated resources. I'm just showing you here as a demo environment, right, how you run GitLab in Docker containers on top of everything, both the runner and GitLab, you would not, not necessarily want to run them in, in um, Docker containers. You could, <clears throat> but you can also install GitLab, you know, as a binary regular application on your CentOS uh, and manage it that way if you want. Docker is just something that I found easier to just deploy, instantiate, right? Bring it up online quick. But it's not for a large environment. If you have an environment with lots of developers, right, or lots of repositories, and your network is large, and you have lots of pipelines running at the same time, and most definitely you would want to consider having GitLab and the runner running as, as full-blown applications, not necessarily as Docker containers, just to be able to have enough resources dedicated to them right both cpu memory uh disk space as you have start going to these large environments this will also play a role as you start creating more logs and more output from all these pipelines and all the repos that you have so all this keep in mind once you start considering this for your own environment having your csd pipelines built with gitlab c uh, like i said this 
will eventually work. It's a lab environment is to show you a demo of what we're, what we're doing here. But if you start considering this for production, then have in mind all this, you know, um, criteria for making sure that your environment is stable, is backed up, is has enough resources, power, cooling and all of that. So let's see, am I connecting back? Uh, it's still struggling. What happens if I go on? Here. So it's kind of connected, but it's struggling. Developer DevNet, come on. We had this happen also towards the beginning, right when we actually rebooted. Um, I might just need to reboot. Oh, there we go. Connected back. All right, so this is my personal project. CICD updated four minutes ago. Let's see what happened. Uh, CICD pipelines. It looks like it might have failed again. It failed again, but why this time? It failed for the pipe pre snapshot. And why did it fail? Failed to load into dict pre trigger data file that YAML. Failed to load the data file pre trigger data file that YAML. Okay, so let's see why it failed pre trigger data file. Pre trigger data byte yes. Pre trigger data file that YAML. Fail to load because it's PyTS yes, pre trigger data file that YAML. Oh, pre trigger data file. That YAML. <laughs> okay. Test bad file, and then let's make sure that the post trigger data file, it's also that's that YAML. Oh, that's fine. Um, okay. <laughs> so there you go. We're slowly troubleshooting there, so it didn't find the file because the extension is YAML and not YML. So let's do that again, change it, save it, git status, git add everything, git commit, corrected, ITS pre trigger data file extension to YAML instead of YML. Git push developer And there we go, it's been pushed. So that triggered the pipeline. Let's see, can we connect? Yes, so we triggered the pipeline. We see that it's running. Well, pending, it should be running shortly here. And we see it's running. So let's see now <laughs> what else we're gonna run into next. 
as we troubleshoot our pipeline over here. But you see, nothing is scripted. It's all live, right? So that's what I wanted to show you. Things happen, right? Fat finger something, put the wrong extension on a YAML file. <laughs> uh, so these things happen, right? It's normal for, it's just not to get discouraged when something breaks and then to consistently go and you know, try to figure things out and fix them. It's gonna make you better next time, right? You'll know all these little tidbits and all these small problems that you ran into, you'll know them and you'll be able to easier, um, to more easily kind of troubleshoot these things and, and get your pipeline working. So it's kind of good that we've, we're have running into all these issues and we're recording them and you can find them on Twitch as recordings and you know, just see if you run into the same problems that I have with, if you followed exactly what I've done, then yes, you've run into the same problems. Um, but right. It just, you get experience, you learn, you get better. So let's see what happens here with, uh, with our pipeline using the Docker image. Um, come on. It's been running for about one minute. And let's see what's gonna happen next. We fixed a couple of issues. Still running. Okay, so that's different. It's a different error. Let's see. Telos connection. A bit. So the laptop is struggling, right? <laughs> As you can see, it's struggling a bit because I'm running the virtual machine with GitLab C, the runner on the same laptop. I'm running OBS Studio for streaming this and I'm running the, a couple of <laughs> other things in the background. So it's text, right? Um, this Mac laptop, it's a MacBook Pro, but still it's, it's pretty text at this point. Um, might have to reboot that CentOS image just to clear up a bit. So I think uh, the CPU on it is still, yeah, 400%, like four cores being used for it. Uh, so definitely it's, it's maxing out a bit here, my laptop setup. At least I hope the recording keeps going. It looks like it's fine. I got a green mark here. So I hope you folks can see this and hear me while uh, CentOS 9 is struggling here in the background in the laptop. Okay. So let's see what happened. Spinning. I'm thinking about it. Trigger data file. Pre snapshot, we have the right file now, YAML. Uh, okay, come on. It's 
go. I'd be curious if folks watching this tried to set up their own pipelines, what type of issues you run into, right? What types of problems you see me troubleshooting here. So I'd love to, to get your feedback and, and see what type of problems you folks are running into. Um, because this one, it's a bit uh, interesting. with my CentOS 9 box being pretty maxed out here. Yeah, this is pretty bad. So let me see if I can log in into it, reboot it. I was hoping that we can get everything working today, but it's a bit slow. Come on. On the flip side, it might be running the all of the pipeline, right? It might be running. So it might take a couple of minutes for it to finish. And then hopefully it will give us back connection to the box. Uh, but I'm kind of crossing my fingers that if it takes longer to give me control, it means the pipeline is running. So it means that it's running to all the stages right now. Um, and if it runs successfully, we'll just wait a couple of minutes. Then, oh, let's see. Then we might be able to show you a successful run of the pipeline today. And then we can wrap it up and continue with guests, right? So we're gonna have, I wanna have guests part of our uh, Twitch streaming here in the upcoming weeks and months, right? So we'll bring in a person who, uh, every week, see what they're working on, see you know what projects uh, they recommend, where we can find them, Right, are they on GitHub? Are they on the DevRel, DevNet, Community Exchange? Right, where, where we can find them, where, what are the requirements, the pre-requirements for running these um, small applications, automation project, whatever the, the guests will have. Um, so for one hour, we'll just talk with them um, so I'm looking forward to that, having folks come on, show what they're working on, um, and being able to uh, also answer your questions. If you have any, we'll just drop them in the Twitch chat over there and um, we'll keep the conversation going. So what happened here now? Let's see. Is it connected? Looks like it might be connected. Can I refresh it? Stop CICD. At least we got the runner working, right? So the pipeline now is going through the steps. So we, um, we figured that issue. But now this one, as far as I remember, that was a reboot of CentOS 9, right? We had this initially when it was like super slow. Um, correct it. So, okay, so the pipeline failed again. Let's see why did it fail this time. Uh, failed. And it failed at the pre snapshot again. Uh, let's see what happened here. So you see, you can see kind of an output as your pipeline runs. 
uh, error passed, pre snapshot errored, uh, missing SMTP server, sending report email. Okay, so let's see what happened here. Argument of time, non time is not uh, iterable. Connected to the devices. Okay, so we're making progress. It's coming along. We're connecting to the devices here. We get the pre trigger uh, data file. Aired. Verify OSPF neighborships, line 317. Argument of type non type is not iterable. Verify advertised OSPF routes is not iterable. All right, all right, so let's see in our pre trigger data file we had verify OSPF neighborships per test sections uh, pre-trigger data file okay let me quickly see Test section, verify OSPF neighborships, parse. I think this should be indented. Pretty sure they have to be indented here. And device two. And then verify uh, what do we have. Pre snapshot OSPF parallel learn device feature OSPF save and same thing. API device function arguments data yeah api device Tab. All right, so there's some indentation issues here for sure that we've had. Um, verify OSPF neighborships, parallel parse device command. Include and parse device command include parse device command include uh, yep so this looks better now let's see post trigger that I file because we'll have the same thing here let's fix it now
because most probably we'll have the same indentation issue. Parallel parse, yeah, device has to be indented, include. device tool and then also for parallel learn device feature save variable name then learn device feature save and then also in parallel function arguments data and then actions API yeah here it's also indented Function arguments. So, a bit of um, corrections here. Actually, this should be indented all the way from up here. And then the actions all of them indented. All right. So loop loop variable. Then let's see what we have here. Parallel API device function arguments data file name API device function arguments data file name so pretty much everything updated and indented loop here too. Parallel would be here. Same thing here. Everything basically indented because the loop function needs everything to be indented the right way. All right. So that's better. Verify advertise routes, parallel, parse, device, command, include. Verify advertised or SPF routes. Verify SPF neighborships. All right. Let's see what is, how does this look?
all right so i think now it's better let's see git status git add everything git commit corrected indentation on pyts trigger files and then git push There we go, pushed. And then we'll trigger our pipeline. If we get disconnected. Pipelines, come on, it's running. Is it running any jobs right now? What happened? Let's see. Okay, so it's still running. Our job is running. Let's see, come on. All right, so um, we have eight more minutes here for today. Um, let's see how much progress we can make. This little troubleshooting everything. Uh, it will work by the end of it. Uh, I was hoping we get it done today, but you see we run into all these issues. Runner, fixed. What else we had? We had the indentation issue. Right, that was another one. There was the YML instead of YAML, the GitLab uh, ci.yaml file. So there's, you know, typos, indentation issues, runners failing to register. We got all of that hopefully figured out. So let's see now uh, if what happens now with the pipeline as it's running. But we made progress, right? So it connects to the devices. Uh, there was the indentation issue, so that it's doing in parallel different, uh, running different commands, PyTS. So it's connected to the devices, right? Uh, and then on the parallel side, and it failed because it was not indented right, the pre-triggered data file. So we've corrected that. Let's see what happens now. It should, hopefully, if there aren't any other errors, finish at least the first stage successfully and then we'll jump into the ansible let's see what guys what's gonna happen there uh going back to the pipeline job 19 come on So this is responsive, it should be better now. We might have to start jumping into troubleshooting OSPF neighborships. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong, but that might be also something that uh, we'll have to go and troubleshoot to see why OSPF neighborships. But I mean, this is normal, right? This is what you would do as you run these. Oh yeah, there we go. So running, we have the runner, uh, check the repo, testbed is readable. Uh, this is the command that is running, the script that is running. And using locally found image version, right? Like I said, it's not gonna pull it again because it's already there. So Docker image is already there. Uh, loading the testbed file, connecting to the devices, 
running those commands, show uh, IPOS PF neighbor detail command, try extracting information from there, making sure that it contains whatever we need to contain, uh, those neighbor ships that are established, the routes that are there, the SPF routes, making sure that we take a snapshot before performing any changes. So let's see what happens. This looks this looks good. We're making progress. Uh, we might have to wrap everything up next week, but we made some progress. Let's see if the first stage of this is completely done today. Curious and excited. Come on, PyTS. Uh, looks like it's, it's taking its sweet time here. The nice thing is that you can see the commits that we've done also, right? Corrected indentation of PyTS trigger files. Um, so you see the com. That's why it's important to make uh, to make good comments uh, once you do a git commit, a git push, so that you know what you've done. Right, you can go back in time and kind of figure out what happened. Okay, so what's what's going on here now? On pipeline. Uh, it's struggling. Uh, so that's what's uh, happening. Let me see the view. Pipeline seems to be still running. Did we, did I mess up anything? Indentation still, let's see. So it lost connection over SSH to it. I'm gonna reboot it. We wrap up today over here and uh, I'm just gonna reboot that CentOS 9. It's like it's struggling and I see there's some updates, I believe also operating system updates. I see this software here. Uh, so just install that, I guess probably they're cached and it needs a, it needs a reboot, looks like. Kind of clear its head and the password. That's the password. Attempting to reconnect. <laughs> so I got disconnected. It's struggling. All right, so we'll wrap it up here, right? I'll reboot it and we'll pick back up next week where we left off. We made some good progress. 
right? We figure out the runner, we figure out the YAML extension, the indentation, I hope. Uh, so this is the first stage. I'm fairly confident it's gonna run. Um, so thanks everyone for joining me on this. Uh, I'll see you all next week. We'll continue from pretty much, hopefully I'll be able to reboot it. <laughs> And we'll get a working CentOS 9 again with, with everything working. And we'll continue from there. Thanks everyone for joining. I uh, hope you found this useful and see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye.